Here's what you missed in January 2024. It's reported that a sequel to Disney's Wizards of Waverly Place series is in development, with original cast members including David Henry and Selena Gomez confirmed to return in some capacity. The trailer for Despicable Me 4 is released, giving us our first look at Gru's child. Glynis Johns, one of the last stars from the golden age of Hollywood, passes at 100. Jack Black confirms that he will be starring in the upcoming Minecraft live-action movie as Steve, the video game franchise's most recognizable default character. Sierra Mist, which was released in 1999 to compete with Sprite, is discontinued, being replaced by a new lemon-lime soda called Starry. After nearly a decade, the mobile game Kim Kardashian Hollywood is announced to be shutting down, prompting longtime players to mourn the loss of their elaborate digital lives. Actor Tom Hollander reveals on Late Night with Seth Meyers that he was accidentally sent a seven-figure check intended for fellow actor Tom Holland. It's announced that the character Che Diaz, played by Sarah Ramirez, has been axed from the Sex and the City sequel series and just like that. The removal has been credited to frequent criticisms directed at the character and the show's delayed production schedule due to the WGA strike, although Ramirez has alluded that they believe they were fired due to their public support of Palestine. Mia Goth is sued by a background actor in her upcoming film, Maxine, with the suit alleging that the actress physically assaulted him and had him wrongfully terminated from the project. Margot Robbie and her stylist, Andrew McCommell, tease their upcoming fashion coffee table book, Barbie The World Tour. The book will detail the outfits Robbie wore during the Barbie movie press tour, as well as the looks we didn't get to see due to the sag after strike that occurred around the time of the film's release. Jurgen Teller photographs W Magazine's Best Performances issue, with his unique style once again setting the internet ablaze. The New York Times releases an op-ed that theorizes that Taylor Swift is in fact queer, using various fan theories as evidence of this speculation. Two years earlier, the same author had previously implied in an article that Harry Styles may be trapped in the closet. At the 75th Emmy Awards, The Bear and Succession tie for the most wins. The second season of Feud airs, which is a fictionalized look at writer Truman Capote after he uses the personal lives of his high society friends in his final novel. The cast list for White Lotus season 3 is released, and includes Parker Posey, Jason Isaacs, Leslie Bibb, and Michelle Monaghan. It's announced that Kim Kardashian will be producing an upcoming BBC docuseries tentatively titled Elizabeth Taylor, Rebel Superstar. Jean-Paul Gaultier presents its latest haute couture collection, guest designed by Simone Rocha. The nominees for the 2024 Academy Awards are announced, with Oppenheimer leading with 13 nominations and Poor Things following closely behind with 11. The Barbie movie, which was last year's biggest box office hit, received eight nominations including Best Supporting Actor and Actress, Best Picture, and Best Costume Design. Margot Robbie did not receive a nomination for her role as the title character, prompting fans of the film and even other actors to say that she'd been snubbed. If you saw my review of the Barbie movie, you can probably guess how I feel about the whole situation. Mean Girls the Musical the movie is released to theaters. Subway announces the return of their foot-long chocolate chip cookie, as well as a foot-long churro in collaboration with Cinnabon, and a foot-long pretzel with Auntie Anne's. Open wide, I guess. The copyright on the Steamboat Willie cartoon expires, making the nearly 100-year-old character public domain. Before you start selling t-shirts with Mickey Mouse on them, keep in mind that this only covers the Steamboat Willie version. You don't want Disney knocking on your door. The original Peter Pan, from the 1904 play by J.M. Barry, similarly enters public domain. Broadway legend Cheetah Rivera passes a week after her 91st birthday. Ariana Grande releases the music video for Yes And, the first single on her upcoming seventh album, Eternal Sunshine. The song, which references ballroom culture, is a not-so-subtle response to the ongoing criticism Grande has received since entering a relationship with her Wicked co-star, Ethan Slater. Evan Rachel Wood and Darren Criss join the off-Broadway production of Little Shop of Horrors, succeeding Constance Wu and Corbin Blue as Audrey and Seymour. The trailer for This Is Me Now, A Love Story is released. An experimental narrative musical film, the project takes inspiration from Jennifer Lopez's upcoming album of the same name. A previously unreleased song by Miley Cyrus, 
plays at Louis Vuitton Men's Autumn Winter 2024. Sistar 19, a duo consisting of members of the now disbanded K-pop group Sistar, return after a decade with the single No More. After months of speculation, Halle Bailey finally confirms that she and boyfriend DDG have welcomed their first child. Rapper Ice Spice announces that she will be releasing her debut album, Y2K, later this year. This coincided with the release of the standalone single, Think You The Shit? Parentheses, Fart. Adele announces four exclusive concerts in Germany this coming summer. The Coachella 2024 lineup is revealed, with this year's headliners including Lana Del Rey, Tyler the Creator, and Doja Cat. There will also be a special reunion performance from the band No Doubt, their first show together since 2015. Little Nas X releases the music video for Jay Christ, which features celebrity lookalikes and religious imagery, receiving criticism for the latter. Music publication Pitchfork will be merging with men's magazine GQ. Kali Uchis announces that she's expecting her first child in a series of music videos. Usher is Vogue's cover star ahead of his performance at the Super Bowl halftime show, but the spread faces criticism for bringing in model Carolyn Murphy to accompany him. Online, fans questioned why Usher was made to share the cover when other male artists like Harry Styles were able to appear solo. Rapper Young Thug teases his new clothing brand, Act Normal, during his ongoing RICO trial. Megan Thee Stallion releases the single Hiss off of her upcoming album. One Verse, which mentions Megan's Law, which requires registered sex offenders to provide their information to law enforcement, is interpreted as a diss towards Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty who is a convicted sex offender. Shortly after, Minaj hopped on Instagram Live to rant about Megan and preview a track that would be released a few days later, titled Bigfoot. The song wound up referencing Megan specifically, talking about her deceased mother, as well as the Tory Lanez shooting. During this time, Minaj's fans, the Barbs, continued to prove how toxic celebrity parasocial relationships are by doxing her critics and threatening to harm them. Jessica Simpson stars in a commercial for Chicken of the Sea, 20 years after infamously getting the tuna product confused for actual chicken on an episode of her reality show, Newlyweds, Nick and Jessica. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken. This, along with other potentially scripted, dumb blonde moments, helped make Simpson a pop culture phenomenon in the 2000s. Only three months after publicizing his marriage, figure skater Yuzuru Hanyu announces his divorce due to excessive media reporting that bordered on harassment. Sports Illustrated lays off more than 100 employees. Caperni and Puma collaborate on a sneaker that's intended to be part football cleat, part dress shoe. The Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers are officially headed to the Super Bowl. Explicit AI images of Taylor Swift are spread online, drawing attention to the growing dangers of deepfake content that can negatively impact both celebrities and normal people. This prompts a group of US senators to introduce a bill that would criminalize the spread of non-consensual, sexualized images generated by AI. Oppenheimer wins five of its eight nominations at the 81st Golden Globes. Succession's final season wound up winning four awards, Beef won in all three categories it was nominated for, and Jeremy Allen White and Io Edaberry both won for The Bear. Lily Gladstone wins Best Actress in a Motion Picture Drama for her portrayal of Molly Burkhart in Killers of the Flower Moon, making her the first Indigenous actor to win a Golden Globe. Comedian Joe Coy hosted the evening, with his monologue immediately receiving negative reactions from critics, viewers, and even the celebrities attending the event. Coy would go on to blame the writers for the lukewarm reception to his jokes. Adrian Apulazza is appointed as the new creative director for Moschino. His predecessor, David Rene, passed away in November, only nine days after assuming the role himself. Lana Del Rey models for Skim's Valentine's Day campaign. Gwendolyn Christie closes Maison Margiela's Spring 2024 couture show, which practically breaks the fashion side of the internet, with people attempting to figure out legendary makeup artist Pat McGrath's secret to glass mask makeup. Various celebrities, including Zendaya, Hunter Schaefer, and Jennifer Lopez, attend the Scaparelli couture show. The biographical crime series Griselda begins streaming on Netflix. Peaky Blinders actor Paul Anderson pleads guilty to drug possession, with his lawyer attempting to pin the blame on his on-screen alter ego. Ashley Park reveals that she's been hospitalized from septic shock, 
delaying her return to the set of Emily in Paris as production begins on the series' fourth season. Elon Musk's controversial Neuralink brain chip is implanted in its first human subject. In earlier tests done on monkeys, all died either from euthanization or complications from the device. Another batch of documents relating to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell are unsealed. The window of an Alaska Airlines 737 blows out mid-flight, leaving a huge hole that forces pilots to make an emergency landing. Luckily, no one was injured, with the two people who were supposed to be seated next to the window fortunately missing the flight. YouTuber MatPat, who's been creating content for over a decade, announces that he will be stepping away from his various channels. The internet goes crazy over the Stanley Cup, prompting middle schoolers and moms to go head-to-head -head over the trendy water bottles. This coverage turned negative after it was discovered that Stanley still uses lead in its manufacturing process. What did you miss in January 2024?